lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy. This time I'm reviewing The Princess and the Fangirl by Ashley Poston. This is a geek retelling of The Prince and the Popper. Our two main characters are a actress who plays the space princess in this really popular sci-fi movie and one of the fangirls who follow that show. Movie. Movie that is based off a show. Anyway, this is a sequel to Geekerella by Ashley Poston. If you haven't read the first one, I recommend reading Geekerella first as a retelling of Cinderella. Both these stories are centered around this show called Starfield, which was a kind of obscure sci-fi show in, like, I think the 90s um, that has a very strong fan base but it's maybe not the most popular thing, at least until it gets rebooted into this movie that is now a box office success. And there, and the entire plot of The Princess and the Fangirl takes place at a sci-fi convention that was started around the show Starfield. So the princess in this, Jessica Stone, plays the Princess Amara in that show. And she is not a sci-fi geek. She doesn't quite understand the fans. She doesn't understand why they're so obsessed with her. Um, her character also just got killed off in the movie and they're getting ready to start the sequel. And so everybody thinks that her character is dead and is going to stay dead. And she is perfectly happy with that. Jessica would like to move on and do more serious roles, stuff that is Oscar worthy, maybe some independent projects. She doesn't really want to be the focus of a sci-fi um, movie series. She wants to go do other stuff. Um, but she's at this con and she's getting all these questions about this character. She's meeting all these fans who are obsessed with it and she just doesn't get it. The other main character of this is Imogen who goes by Mo, who is a fangirl. She's actually started this online movement trying to save Amara. It's actually hashtag save Amara. And she just, she wants the character to come back. Amara means a lot to her. She played a huge part in this show. She's this really strong female sci-fi character that a lot of people see themselves in. And even if Jessica doesn't see that, Mo and a lot of the other fangirls do. And they want the character to come back. And so she's been pushing to have Amara show up in the sequel and in the rest of the series. Which Jessica just doesn't want to do. So this takes place entirely at the sci-fi convention. And... Jessica's in between interviews. She goes to the bathroom, um, is having a meltdown about, like, why does everybody care so much about this character? I don't want to be here. I don't want to do the sci-fi thing. I don't want to do the next movie. Um, she also doesn't know if her character is coming back. So a lot of uncertainty. So she has a meltdown in the bathroom. And Mo has been at these conventions for a while. She has snuck her way into the, like, VIP bathrooms. And when she leaves, she gets mistaken for Jessica because they look pretty much exactly alike. Like, all their facial features are the same. They're wearing the same hat. One of the volunteers grabs Mo, thinks it's Jessica, and just brings her onto the panel. And Mo is freaking out, doesn't know exactly what to do, and just kind of fakes it, though. She's like, all right, everybody thinks I'm Jessica Stone. I can use this as an opportunity to advance my cause and get Amara saved. So she goes through this entire interview panel with nobody figuring out that she's not a Jessica. When the panel's over, Jessica, like, steps in, is furious that anybody would impersonate her and would also try to bring her character back, which may be what Mo insinuated in the, uh, the interview panel. Um, so Jess is pissed. They go off on their own. That would seemingly be the end of it, except that Jessica makes a mistake. She is given the script to the next movie, and she's supposed to look at it, um, but she's so pissed she doesn't want to be in the movie that she just throws it out. And, of course, this is not great. Somebody gets their hand on the script and starts posting it online, and Jessica has to track down who it is. And so she convinces... Um, she convinces Imogen to switch places with her for the weekend and to be her. And so um, she agrees to this. She's like, great, I can further my agenda. I can bring attention to the fact that all the, the fans actually want Amara to come back. And so Imogen gets to step into the spotlight and have everybody pay attention to her. 
and focus on her and she can try to steer the conversation. But the other part of the agreement is that Jessica also has to be Imogen for the weekend. And so she gets to deal with the fangirl life and seeing what that looks like and um, meeting a lot of the other fans and actually understanding them and where they're coming from and why they care about Amara so much. So it's really a fascinating look at fandom from both the perspective of a star and a fangirl and trying to understand each other better. There are also tons of really fun uh, background characters in here. We have, um, so like Jessica's best friend, Ethan, who is also her personal assistant, um, is in on it. He helps them make the switch. He is the one talking Mo through what she's supposed to do every day. And when the two of them meet originally, they absolutely hate each other. They don't get along. Um, Mo just thinks that he is a killjoy and he's some prissy um, teenager who's trying to act above the station. But actually, Ethan is a huge fanboy. He loves everything geeky. He loves Star Wars and plays D&D. And he is not what she expected. And as the two of them um, get to know each other better, there's definitely a little bit of a romance uh, going on there. And then Jessica also steps into Mo's life. And she gets to meet Mo's brother and the brother's boyfriend. And she gets to meet Imogen's uh, best friend online, Harper, who has never actually met. So Harper and Imogen have never met. And so when Harper meets Jessica, she thinks it's Imogen and just like goes with it. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of Jessica just trying to keep it the pretense, but also Jessica kind of has a thing for Harper. Um, and while Jessica is gay, Imogen isn't, and so she's trying to not, she can't act on anything. She can't be like, hey, you want to go out? Also, she's trying to be somebody else, so just starting on a live would not be great. Um, and there's also all this pressure that Jessica's supposed to be dating all these male celebrities, um, which to Jessica is just acting, but everybody else just assumed that, assumes that she's straight because of it. So all kinds of complications happening in the story. I love how deeply this goes into the fandom. Um, Jessica definitely is getting a lot of hate from some of the fanboys and some of the fangirls who are not happy with how she portrays Amara. She's not what they expected. She is definitely not a fan of sci-fi and it comes off in her interviews and they treat her like she's stuck up um, and she she's too good for sci-fi and so she's getting a lot of hate online and um, we get to see Jessica struggling with like the darker side of fandom and what that does to her and Mo also gets to see some of the darker side of the fandom as she's stepping into Jessica's um, Jessica's role which she didn't, she didn't necessarily know about. So it definitely explodes all of the fandom, the good and the bad, which I also enjoyed. So connecting these two books, Darian definitely shows up a lot because he is Jessica's co-star. He's also at all these panels. He's um, also a huge fan of the show, and so he's a lot more invested. The fans love him, and so there's definitely this difference between how the fans relate to Darian versus how the fans relate to Jessica, both because of like the male versus female thing, but also the whole Darian loves the fans, he loves the show, and it definitely comes off. Um, Elle is the other main character from Geekerella, and she shows up a few times, and when she does show up, boy oh boy are they awesome moments, but they are few and far between. So if you're looking for more Elle, um, she's there, but not a lot. Um, because Darian and Elle both show up in The Princess and the Fangirl, spoilers for the Gorilla, so definitely start this one. Um, you can go into The Princess and the Fangirl not having read Geek Gorilla. Enough of what you needed to know is explained in here, but it's just, it's so much better when you've got the whole universe. And if you read this one first, it'll spoil, it'll spoil the first book. On the whole, I really enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars. It wasn't as good as Geekerella, which I gave five stars and just ate up. I love Elle and Darian's relationship more. And the fact that we are in this book, we get to see Elle and Darian. It's a dual perspective. Those are the two people we're following, and so we get to see the relationship from both sides. Um, and this one, we also have a dual perspective, but it's Jessica and Mo. And we aren't seeing the two sides of the relationships. It's not like we don't know what Harper and Ethan feel about 
Imogen and Jessica, but like it's different when you're like actually in their perspective and actually in their thought trains. Um, so that was one difference. Also, we get to see a lot of the darker sides of the fandom, which is just not as much fun to have to deal with that. Um, and especially the hate that Jessica gets as a woman and just being female um, is not great. Um, so those two things made this book a little bit less enjoyable, but it is definitely a very strong, well-written, lovable book, and I definitely want to read it again. I am definitely going to go buy it. Um, got this one out of the library, in case you guys can't tell. Um, so I definitely am going to go buy it eventually. I love both their story arcs. I love how both of them have to learn about the other person's life. Um, so I love where the story goes. I love who's posting the script and that whole thing. Um, there's definitely a lot of geeky moments in here. There's a lot of references to other sci-fi fandoms. There are also some fan things that I like didn't know about. Like they talk about Stan, S-T-A-N, which is apparently a stalker fan. It was a term that I had never heard about. I guess I don't spend enough time on Tumblr. I also love the fact that Harper draws fan art and sells it at the con, so we get to see what Harper is drawing and what pairings she's using and how important representation is within the fandom as well. So she is drawing pictures of female female characters together, male male characters together, even if on the show and in the movie they would never actually be together, but that's what the fans want and that's what the fans um, are, are just going to spend the money on, so that's what Harper is drawing. Um, some of them might not be her fandoms, but that's what that's what the people want, so let's give it to them. Um, I loved that nod to it and how Jessica reacts to the different pairings. <laughs> some of them involving her character. This is fun. It's funny. It's light. It's totally adorable. If you love sci-fi, this is amazing. If you love conventions, if you just want a Prince and the Popper story, it's all there. I highly recommend The Princess and the Fangirl. I also really, really love Geekerella, so I highly recommend book one. The link to my review of book one will also be in the description below. Totally go check that out. Let me know in the comments below if you've read Princess and the Fangirl and what you thought of it. If you read Geekerella, what you thought of that. What other books should I be checking out? Any other amazing fandom related stories? I also really love The Con Artist, um, which is a murder mystery set at a uh, sci-fi convention. And I will post a link to that one down in the description below if you want just more convention stories. So, peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.